Hello everybody, this is Ryan Hafey with CheapChucky.com and today I'm going to do a little tutorial showing you how to create a checkbook register using Microsoft Excel. Um, now this is going to be very handy for those of you who hate carrying around a physical checkbook uh, register and having to write in the uh, every transaction manually doing the math in your head. It's a pain, I know. Um, it's also going to be very helpful for those of you who just want to get a little bit better handle on your finances uh, and want to have uh, a little bit more knowledge in terms of what money's coming in, what money's going out, uh, your balance uh, to date, those types of things. So um, now if you don't use Microsoft Excel, if you don't have that on your computer, um, there's another option. You can actually go to openoffice.org and you can download free Office software that is almost identical in many ways uh, to a lot of the Microsoft Office programs. Um, and the spreadsheet software available at openoffice.org, uh, the setup will be almost identical to what I'm going to show you now. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what we want to do to start out is set up our headings for our checkbook. The headings that I like to use typically are date, check number, description, debit, credit, and balance. Okay, just a quick explanation here. Date, pretty self-explanatory, the date the transaction take pla takes place. Check number, if you do use a lot of checks, you'll want to keep a column uh, to uh, keep track of which check number you use for that particular transaction. Description would be, all right, where did the transaction take place? Debit uh, would be basically money spent out of the account. Credit would be money coming into the account, like a paycheck. And balance would be the current balance uh, of the account. So let's uh, make this a little bit more aesthetically pleasing here real quick. I'm going to drag out the description column so you have more room to type in there. Um, and also what I want to do is go over to row 2, click there, highlight that entire row, go to window, and freeze panes. And what this does is it locks that first row so that no matter, no matter where you scroll on the worksheet, it's going to remain static there so that you know you're putting the right information in the right place. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to format how some of the information in some of these columns comes up. So let's go to column A. I want to select that whole column there with a left click. And then I want to right click, go to Format Cells, Number, go down to Date, and then you can uh, enter however you want the date to appear. I like the default like this, so that's what I'm going to select. Hit OK. Next thing you want to do is cl uh, left click on column D, hold that and then drag it over to column S so that all three rows are highlighted. Right click again, format cells again. This time we're going to format these columns uh, to show up the currency. Um, and then uh, usually the default is just fine. Hit OK. All right, and then the next thing um, that we want to do is I'm, I'm going to enter a formula here. Now, make sure that you're with me so far in terms of location on the worksheet. So, you know, the, the date would be in uh, cell A1 and so on. Just uh, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to enter the formula that's going to allow the balance uh, of the register to update automatically. Now, the formula itself is a little cumbersome to write out. Uh, I don't want to get too technical about things, so what I've done is I've just uh, copied the formula. I'm going to paste it into cell F3. That's very important that you do it into cell F3. Um, now, I'm not going to go too in-depth about what the formula is all about, but what I did do is I copied, um, I have a copy of the formula in the description of this video. Um, so my suggestion is if you're doing this tutorial yourself, just copy it and paste it into cell F3 and it'll work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that uh, formula in and the formula looks like this up here. Okay. Again, I'm not going to get into too much detail about what the formula is doing, um, but uh, you will see what it's all about here in just a minute. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to drag the formula down. Now, uh, if you plan on using this, this uh, register for quite a long time, you want to drag this formula down. And to do that, what you do is you go to the cell in which you put the formula, cell F3, um, scroll, uh, move your cursor over to the corner, the lower right-hand corner of that cell to where the cursor turns into a little, uh, little uh, cross like it's shown there. Left-click and then drag down. They can drag down as far as you want, but basically what this does is it copies the formula into each respective cell. Okay, 
uh, I would recommend going down, you know, five, ten thousand cells. In this case, I'm just going to go down uh, a little ways uh, for for time's sake. But if you notice, uh, if you, sh you see up here, the cell is in this column. If oh, let's skip that. If you scroll down, you'll notice that the um, formula is in the respective columns. Okay. Um, now, if you have multiple accounts that you want to keep track of, what you can do is you can uh, um, use this particular register for those additional accounts. Uh, let's say this particular register is going to be for your checking account. What you can do is go down to here where you see Sheet 1, 2, and 3. Right click on Sheet 1. Click Rename. Let's call this one Checking. Okay, maybe uh, you also want to do a Savings um, Account Register. Let's click over to Sheet 2. Well, in Sheet 2, there's not going to be anything in there. But we're going to right click again on Sheet 2. And this one we're going to call Savings. Uh, and then what we can do is go back to the Checking tab. Go in between Row 1 and uh, Column A and click so that the entire uh, spreadsheet is highlighted. Hit Control C. Click the Savings tab. And then go over to Cell A1 and hit Control V. It's basically going to put all the information from uh, this worksheet, the checking worksheet, over to the savings. The one thing that you may need to do, though, is uh, do the freeze panes uh, uh, action again. So highlight uh, row 2, window, freeze panes to lock that first row up top there. If you notice, the formulas, as shown up here, are still in those cells. Okay. So let's go back to the checking tab. We'll work on this. And if you have additional accounts, you can do that with, with the additional sheets as well. But let's focus on the checking one for right now. Um, what we want to do now to get started, because basically the, 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 um, the register is, is ready to use, but you want to put in an opening balance. So whether you just open an account and you have a balance in there, or if you're just kind of getting started uh, with an account that you've had open for a while, you want to put the current balance in there. Um, so I'm doing this on May the 29th. And I want to, let's say, um, you know, you can put a description like uh, balance as of 529-2010. You wouldn't put anything in debit or credit in this case. You would just put something in balance. So let's say my balance right now is $1,000. Tab out of that. You should see that, that pops up in currency format. Um, and then from then on, then you would put your debits and credits in. So let's say tomorrow... Um, well, let's say today I went to McDonald's. Okay, at McDonald's, let's say I spent ten dollars and fifty cents. All right, now this is where the formula comes into play. When I tab out of that cell, it will automatically take a thousand dollars minus ten dollars and fifty cents, and then put the total of that in the cell to show you the current balance as of this transaction. All right, what if I also got paid today? Let's see, payday. In the credit column, maybe my paycheck was $650. Okay, type 650, tab out of that, and then you've got your calculation there. So now your current balance is $1,639.50. Uh, one other thing you might want to do, there may be another column you may want to add, um, uh, and you could title it uh, Reconcile. And what we, you would use this column for is uh, basically to compare with your bank statement or if you check your statement online. So basically you can look and say, all right, I'm checking my bank statement online. I see this McDonald's um, uh, transaction for $10.50. Once you see that those two match up, uh, you could maybe put an X there to show um, that uh, that transaction did take place. And that way you can also find discrepancies between what's on your statement and what you've entered in yourself. Um, so. Uh, that's pretty much it. You've you've got your register set up. Then you just want to save this to your desktop as a as a uh, um, a file name that you'll remember, and hang on to your receipts from all your transactions. Just maybe put them in at the end of the day, and you will get a great handle in, on um, you know what your current financial state is. Now, if you if this was a little cumbersome for you. Uh, I still wanted to make this tutorial to show you how to use a register, but I've also uh, created a template of this exact um, uh, register that you can find at CheapChucky.com. So head on over there. You can just download that uh, and, and get started right away. 
um, but uh, I at least wanted to make this so that you knew exactly how to be using it. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. My email address is ryan.hafey at cheapchucky.com. Be sure to comment on this video and head on over to the blog at cheapchucky.com, and uh, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.